I guess it really is true when they say that time flies when you're having fun because somehow it's already the one month anniversary of me owning my Rebel 1100. Now what do you do on anniversaries? You go out to dinner. Where do you go out to dinner when you're life of Birch? To get coffee and tacos, of course. So we're going to hop on the 1100, go grab some coffee from Rise Up and tacos from my favorite food truck. And along the way, I'm going to talk about my experience with the bike so far, the pros, the cons, what I've done with it, what my plans are in the future, and whether or not I regret upgrading from my 500 to the 1100. Perfect. Yes, the sweet, sweet sound of freedom. But first, coffee. And just like that, before you know it, it is here and gone. That was so good, and I'm finally making progress with Rise Up, because last time they remembered my name, and this time they remember my order. Eventually, they're going to sponsor me. Please, Rise Up, help. I spent so much money on coffee. All right, enough chit-chat. Let's get this thrown away, get on the road, grab some tacos, and talk about the bike. All right, now that I got some coffee in me, I can finally say, welcome back to Life of Birch. This is Birch. <laughs> Oh yes, she sounds so good. All right, so it's officially been one month with the Rebel 1100, and what a month it has been. Now, I do need to start off by saying that this past month has been the craziest month on YouTube for me by far, and it's all thanks to you guys, so thank you so much for everyone who's watching right now. It has just been a crazy month. My views have, like, tripled, almost quadrupled, and I've gained over 2,600 new subscribers just in the past month alone, so that means that 2,600 of you guys have found my videos and liked what I was doing enough to stick around, so thank you you so much for that. Without you guys, I wouldn't be doing this. I mean, maybe I would, but it'd be a lot more boring because nobody would be watching. So with that said, thank you so much to you guys. Y'all are the best. And if this is your first time here or you've been watching and you haven't subscribed before, please go ahead and click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future videos because I plan on continuing to pump them out. All right, now enough of the chit chat. You guys are here to talk about the bike and I'm here for tacos. So let's knock out both of those things. This bike in the first month has been nothing short of incredible. I've done so much on this bike. Everything from short little quick trips to grab coffee or trips downtown, all the way to multi-hour trips on the highway, going to check out cool new cities. And so far, all of those adventures have put 645 miles on the bike. Now, the first service is due at 600 miles, but I haven't had that done yet. I just flipped over to 600 miles. I think it was yesterday or something like that. So I need to get that scheduled. Let's give it a quick pull. I love it. I saw, dude. Okay, as I was saying, I still have to get my first service done, and I believe that that entails like an oil change and then checking over to make sure that everything's all nice and tight and squared away. And if you guys remember, my bike was also slightly damaged in shipping, and everything was fixed except for the, um, the clutch shift lever or whatever it's called. I just had a brain fart, but you know, that thing where you shift. It's uh, on back order through Honda because it's such a new bike. The parts aren't really available yet, so they just kind of bent it back into place and it's good enough to use now, but when I get my first service done, hopefully they'll have it in by then and they'll replace that as well. And it's interesting because even though the first service is at 600 miles, the break-in period for these bikes is only 300 miles. So I did baby the bike a little bit for the first 300 miles and then after that, even though I hadn't had my service done yet I kind of decided to see what she was all about and man I gotta say this thing has so much more power than the Rebel 500 it is incredible but with that said I did find out that the bike has a 100 mile per hour top speed a saw dude which lots of people had said that they had found out already on their DCT I put it to the test on my manual and the same is true I did a whole video on that that you can check out link in the description and also in that video not to spoil the video for you but I also found out that my bike had a really bad wobble at high speeds anything over like 85 or 90 especially if it was windy the front end would just go back and forth like nobody's business it was super scary there were lots of guesses as to what it could be people were saying my bike was messed up in shipping people were saying i can't believe that honda put out a bike with such a crappy design that it couldn't go over 90 without being dangerous and that's why they had to do the top speed limiter long story short it's because i had my phone mounted right here and it was catching wind and forcing my bars to go back and forth because 
because every time it happened, it was a super windy day and it only happened when my phone was there, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, my phone no longer lives there when I do high speed runs and all is good on that front. Although with that said, the bike does feel a little bit light on the front end when you're doing uh, top speed runs, kind of gunning it. But it's a cruiser, so what do you expect? I'm still perfectly pleased with it. And I also plan on finding a way to make it more stable so that I can go faster whenever a flash or a tune or whatever comes out for the bike. So I guess that slight instability at top speed is a bit of a con. And what other cons have I noticed with the bike so far? Well, for one thing, the paint is already chipping off of the forks a little bit down at the bottom where the uh, bolts hold the axle in. Hopefully that made sense. I'll put in a picture or a video right here to show you what I'm talking about. But yeah, those bolts have somehow rubbed off the paint on the bottom of the forks. And that's really strange for a bike that only has 600 something miles. So definitely going to have that looked at and see what can be done. And then of course, if I'm talking about cons, I have to mention the suspension. The suspension is just not great. It's not bad by any means. And I specifically mean the rear suspension. And I will preface this by saying I haven't had time to mess around with the preload settings yet to kind of dial it in. So that could be a big part of it. But the rear suspension is definitely jarring. Doesn't have a super big amount of travel. And when I'm going fast on the highway, especially if I hit a bump, it'll literally shoot me off my seat. Around town, it's totally fine. But on the highway, it's like almost dangerous. So I definitely have to get that dialed in. And then also I gotta say the range per tank isn't the best. So every time I refill, I wanna say that I'm only getting about 115 miles to the tank and I'm filling up once the gas light comes on and it'll take about like two and a quarter to two and a half gallons of gas. And that's with mixed riding, mostly around town and back roads, not much highway riding. So keep in mind the tank is 3.6 gallons. It has a 1.1 gallon reserve, meaning that the gas light comes on at 2.5 gallons, but I do have about another gallon to spare if I wanted to push it. I just haven't tested that yet. So I guess theoretically speaking, if it's all highway and you push it to its limits, you could probably get like 150 miles per tank if my math was right. I don't know. Maybe we'll test that sometime. And now I guess as we approach downtown Annapolis and we're going to be in some stop and go type traffic, this is a good time to mention another con, which is the twitchy throttle response when you're in sport mode at a low speed. Now I guess it's not that much of a complaint because obviously you can just throw it right into standard mode by the press of a button, a little boot boop and we're good to go so that's not really a big deal i do find myself putting it in standard or rain mode anytime i'm going through like a slow area or whatever but i guess that's to be expected you can't expect to just be in sport mode going full power all the time and be fine and then i guess the last con or complaint i would have about the bike really isn't even about the bike itself but it's the aftermarket support so far and obviously that'll change in the future this is just me griping because we're only a month in but every time i get a bike i'm so excited to do stuff to it and modify it and make it my own and because this bike's so new there's not a whole lot of parts for it yet like even the honda accessories aren't available yet so that's kind of a bummer i just want to like start getting into it and making it my own and modifying it and i can't but like i said if you're watching this video a couple months down the road that's going to be a different story and this bike's going to look completely different i'm sure so you know all things considered those are very minimal cons and they're all fixable so i guess what am i really complaining about you know and now let's talk about all the good parts of the bike uh pretty much everything everything about it is great. I love it. I've had such a blast on this thing. It's so fun. Like it's really at home in the twisties. It handles way better than the 500. So much faster than the 500. And even though I complained about aftermarket support, there's already a clear sign that there's going to be a ton of aftermarket support. I spoke with the guys at Burley Brand, the people that make those stiletto shocks and like the fairings for the front and the dirt bike pegs and everything like that. And they in two to three months plan on having a full Rebel 1100 line. So that is going to be sick. There was not any kind of support like that for the 500. So I cannot wait to get my hands on that, especially the stiletto shocks, because one of my complaints was the rear suspension. So that'll take care of that and it'll make my bike look cooler and handle better. So Burley Brand, if you're watching this, hurry up and hook me up. That sounded mean. I didn't mean like, hurry up and give me something. I meant like, hurry up because I'm excited. And if you want to hook me up with it, that would be tight too. Now, some other pros to the bike. First of all, I just have to say the power. It is so great. Like before this, if you're familiar with the channel, I had my Rebel 500 and my VFR 800. And I kind of needed both bikes because they both served like their own purposes. The Rebel was really fun for like around town because it was so light and nimble. And the VFR 800 was great for longer trips because it had all the power. But you'd never see me taking the Rebel 500 on long trips just because the power was so lacking. And with this, you don't get that. It has plenty of power. I can take this thing anywhere. So I've already just started packing on miles way more than I... Ooh, that looks so good. Anyway, I've just started packing on miles so much faster on this than I did with my 500 because it is just so much more capable. If you saw the video that I put out where I let one of my subscribers ride this and then also
also ride my buddy's automatic DCT model. I think he put it best where he said that if you have a 500 or you've ridden a 500 and then you rode this, they're still similar enough that it feels familiar and you're used to it, but this is just everything that the 500 was not. Every way that I thought the 500 was lacking is fixed with this bike. I don't have to worry about where I go with it. I don't have to worry about what I do with it. It's more comfortable. It's roomier. It still doesn't feel super heavy, but it still has enough weight to keep you nice and planted on the highway so you're not blown around anytime the wind blows. It handles better in the twisties. It's still light enough that I'm going this slow and I still haven't even put my feet down yet. Oop, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> trying to balance as long as I can. Let me not drop my brand new bike. So I guess the answer is obvious. Do I regret upgrading from the 500 to the 1100? Heck no, tech no. I would do that a million times over. I would upgrade in a heartbeat and I'm glad that I did. Now I'll admit that my situation was a little bit different because when I upgraded from my 500 to the 1100, I was able to sell my 500 and sell my VFR 800 in order to get money for this. And after selling both bikes, I only needed to come like 1500 out of pocket or something like that in order to get this so it was really a no-brainer but I guess if you're talking about buying it brand new the 500 versus the 1100 what you're really talking about is about a three thousand dollar difference I believe the 500 brand new is about sixty three hundred and the rebel brand new is about ninety three hundred so for that three thousand dollar difference is it worth getting this instead of the 500 and the answer again heck yes tech yes do it don't think about it do it that extra three thousand dollars gets you a bike that's in a totally different different league, a totally different class, is way more capable, has way more technology to it, comes standard with ABS, standard with cruise control, which by the way I used cruise control for the first time the other day and it is incredible. I thought I would never use it, but I was cruising on the highway at like 75 and I'm like, man, my forearm's getting a little tired. Maybe I'll try throwing it in cruise control. I did and I was like, oh my gosh, where has this been my whole life? And not to mention if you're talking about a $3,000 difference and you're financing it, even if you only finance the bike for three years that's only a thousand dollar difference per year that's less than a hundred bucks a month and then you know there's going to be certain people that say yeah but the price difference doesn't really matter because you know the 500 is more of like a beginner bike whereas the 1100 is like more of an advanced bike it has more power but honestly after riding this bike around in rain mode a little bit just testing it out rain mode has similar if not less power than the 500 so if you're a new rider i could see you totally being able to just throw this in rain mode and use that as a first bike and use the rain mode to control the power and keep you, you know, safe and keep you from just opening the throttle up right away. Now, of course, you could use the argument that that $3,000 difference, if you drop your first bike, as we all do, that you'd much rather drop a $6,000 bike than you would a nine dollars or $10,000 bike, but I guess that's just up to personal preference. Me, personally, I think having a first bike with all of this technology and all these safety features would be incredible. I started out on, like, a carbureted 1992 or whatever. Like, I would have killed to have something as cool as this for my first bike. Now, of course, the 500 you can find used as well. So like my used 500 I found for like four grand. So, you know, when you start talking that, you're talking a four grand 500 versus a 10 grand 1100, then maybe it's worth it to start out on the 500 instead. But anyway, I digress. I am super excited that I upgraded from the 500 to the 1100. I would do it a million times over. And if I were you and I was shopping for a brand new bike and I had the option between the 500 or the 1100 and I was able to afford both, I would go with the 1100 without question. All right, now that we have the one month review out of the way, it's time for date night, and then we'll talk about the future plans that I have for this bike as far as what I plan to do with it, any modifications and all that kind of good stuff, but I am starved, so I need to get tacos in my belly first, and I need them now, so let's see if I can just... Damn, don't you wish it was actually that easy to just transport to tacos? Let's do some work. Light work. You would think I would get sick of tacos eventually, or coffee eventually, but somehow it just gets better and better. I could literally eat tacos for the rest of my life. What do you guys think about doing some kind of like meetup where we all go for a ride and we get Rise Up Coffee and tacos together? Would that be sick? Should I plan that? I think it would be sick, and I think I will plan that. Now let's head to my favorite road and talk about the plans that I have for my Rebel moving forward. Now I figured it was appropriate to come to this road, not only because it's my favorite road ever, but because we're about to talk about future plans for the Rebel, and the future plans for my 
my life are to live on this road. And I don't know how soon, because these houses, if you can't tell, are like multi-million dollar houses, and I have not multi-millions of dollars, but multi-tens of dollars in my bank account currently, but someday it will happen. All right, so plans for the Rebel moving forward. I'll talk about what I want to do to the bike, and then also what I plan to do with the bike. So what I plan to do to the bike, which I've talked about in other videos before, so you may have heard this before, but essentially just like a Dyna Bros Club style version of a Rebel 1100. So if you don't know what that means, it's like the Dynas that have like the stiletto shocks to raise them up a little bit, and like bar risers to bring them up, a nice little front fairing, maybe some like detachable hard bags for the back for when I go on trips. And of course, at some point, I'll have like some kind of orange going on with this bike, because that's just the life of Birchway. It's my favorite color. It's like what I'm known for, the bright orange Rebel. I don't know if I'm going to paint the entire bike orange, or if I'm just going to keep it this and do like orange accents or something like that, but there will be orange somewhere at some point. And then also in true Life of Birch form, I'm going to wheelie this. Not very well, but I'm going to wheelie it. I've never been good at wheelies, but I want to be good at wheelies. I only ever tried a few times on my Rebel 500, but I never got good because I was afraid of just committing and bringing it all the way back. The Rebel 500 doesn't have a whole lot of power, so you have to rev it up a whole lot before dumping the clutch in order to bring the front end up. And just hearing how high it revved, I was just like, dude, I'm going to loop it, even though I only ever got like a foot off the ground. But I want to wheelie this, so I'm going to wheelie this. Mark my words. And then also, I'm going to do a bunch of trips on this. I want to start moto camping. I feel like that just seems like so much fun to just get out there, strap like a tent and like a sleeping bag and whatever minimal supplies to a sissy bar and just go out in the woods and camp. So definitely expect some videos with that. And then because it has so much power, I want to do longer trips now that I can actually comfortably ride on the highway. Now, I don't know if I'm going to just like get out there and do a cross country trip, but that would be sick. I've thought about doing it. And like maybe once I start getting enough money off of YouTube that I can actually take a couple weeks off my job and not have to worry about not having money, then like maybe I'll do that. You guys want to see me take my Rebel 1100 from uh, Maryland to California and back? Let me know in the comments. And then like I was saying also, just kind of like throwing it out there about like a meetup to get coffee and tacos. I want to do a lot of meetups with this bike so I can meet you guys and like meet the people who are supporting me watching my videos and like make some new friends that I can ride with. You know what I mean? Once it's like consistently nice out here in Maryland, I'm going to start posting up things on here telling you guys about different meetups and rides that I'm going to plan. So I think that'll be super cool. And then of course I plan to test out pretty much every new part that comes out for this bike. Not to say that I'm going to get every new part for it, but like anything that comes out for it that I want, I'm going to get and I'm going to do uh, review videos on there. As soon as it's available, I'm going to get the passenger seat for it as well, since it does not come factory for the US models. And I'll do kind of a ride where I go out with a passenger for the first time and see how this handles with a passenger compared to the 500. Obviously, I'm sure it will do much, much better than the 500, just given the size difference, the weight difference, the power difference, but we're still going to test that out. And then what else do I plan on doing? Oh, I just saw a comment that somebody left saying that I should race a Sportster 1200, and it's really ironic that I saw that because my buddy Eric, who you guys have seen on the channel before, he used to have the CBR 650, now he has a CBR 1000. He also just recently got a uh, Sportster 1200, and we just rode the other day, and we were talking about doing a video where we race. So definitely keep your eyes peeled for that one. And then, of course, I already found out that the top speed is 100, but whenever an ECU flash slash tune slash whatever comes out for this bike that can raise the top speed, we're going to see how much power we can eke out of this bad boy. And just overall, just really push this bike to its limits, see what it can do, see what it can't do. Essentially, just have as much fun on this thing as possible and kind of show you guys what it's made of. So that is the plan. As you can tell, I am super stoked to have this bike. It has been a great first month. I've had an absolute blast on this bike. I've had a great time interacting with you guys, and I can't wait to start making this bike my own and get to interact with you guys in person at the meetups. And I hope you guys are as excited as I am. So as always, thanks so much for staying tuned and uh, watching to this point. If you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future content. As you can tell, we have a bunch of really cool content on the way. And if you haven't done it already, please make sure to go ahead and smash that like button so that YouTube algorithm knows that you like it. Leave a comment if you feel so inclined. And I'm going to run over these girls making a TikTok. Peace.